Weekday during spring training, we'll be here 11 a.m. Eastern time for you. Scotty Braun, AJ Prezinski, Todd Frazier, Eric Kratz, the whole crew. With nerve it took to say that in a paper and then go and tap the shin the shin guard of the guy you know that is the most feisty player on the team. What do you expect to happen? You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, Yachty has neck tattoos. Of course, he's gonna fight me <laughs> if you call him out. Listen, you know, but that 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 brawl itself was wild because there was so much going on. Uh, uh, you know, I was kind of in the middle of that for a while, and wherever the wave was taking you was where you were gonna go. You couldn't you couldn't control that at all. Um, I tell them this is what I tell the players. I say, hey. Just do the math. You sacrifice 10 years of your life so you can make all the money that you can make in baseball. And then let's say you retire at 35, 40. You have until you die to do whatever you want. So if you want to drink, if you want to go to clubs, if you want to party, if you want to hang out at bars, you got from 35 until you die to do all those things. Some of them are dumb. <laughs> and... and, and... <laughs> Some of them are like, yeah, I like it, you know. Wait, which one's dumb? Well, I mean, which ones are dumb? I mean, I, I, I can't be on the grass when the pitcher is even coming set. Like, I, before the pitcher even comes set, I have to be on the dirt. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it's, it's like, what's a step on the grass so that I can creep into the dirt, you know? When the ball is being released, yeah, let me be on the dirt. But after that, let me... You know, let me be on the grass and like preset and start to come forward and then the dirt. This is like a super quick question with probably a long answer. Are you a Hall of Famer? <laughs> yeah, you know me about being long winded, huh, Crazy? Um, <laughs> you know what? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, if, if this was based on the criteria that was. And like when I was first came up, coming up, I would say not even, you know, not even close. Um, but the game is a different game now. And I just don't know how many more 200 game winners we're going to even have, you know. Um, I don't know what that is. I know what, I've done some cool stuff. I know I've still got to do some cooler stuff. But, uh, you know, I don't have any Cy Youngs, which probably hurts my case. The problem with that was always, it wasn't my fault. I pitched pretty good. It was always Clayton Kershaw's fault or Roy Halladay's fault. You know, those guys. Those guys were just better, you know. They were they were just better than me, and uh, nothing nothing wrong with that, man. I'm, I've been second a few times, and uh, second always to someone great. So um, I can appreciate greatness, and I've pitched with a lot of guy, great guys. But uh, you know, I don't know. As far as in my era, um, Kershaw, Scherzer, Verlander, Grinky, um, you know, those were kind of my my guys that always pushed me. Those were coming up with those those guys always wanting to one up you know one of them all the time um, those are the guys that pushed me I think probably all four of those guys are, are Hall of Famers um, I don't know it might be a just miss it might be a just make I don't know it might be a veterans committee might be a no chance I have no idea we'll wait and see what's cool to me though is that uh, I'm in the I'm in the there's a chance I'm in the I'm in the conversation and I think the cool part of that for me is when I got to the end of 2018 I thought I was retired if I had retired at the end of 2018 we're not even having this conversation uh, we, we gotta ask like I, I know a good or I know the twins doctors like the ankle we, what do we got the ankle's good right the ankle everything's good like can you I mean you can tell us what you want to tell us but I want to know because you were the biggest story this offseason like did you get like a Giants tattoo? Did you get like a Mets tattoo somewhere? Cause you know, you're there for these press conferences. And then I heard about you working with the twins guys this off season. So like, what happened? Tell me in your words, cause as a former player, I want to hear it from a player. What happened? Well, what happened was I had a surgery in 2014. Um, I had a, I broke my fibula sliding into uh, third base. I slid late, my cleat got caught. 
broke my uh, fibula, so I need a surgery there on my foot. Um, and, you know, they repaired it, and then from then I played with no problems for eight years. Eight, um, eight seasons in the big leagues, one more in the minor leagues, and I never had a problem. So I'm going into the Giants physical thinking, you know, this, this is a no great Like, for sure I'm passing this, this uh, physical. I mean, I played last year, no issues at all. I, I felt the best I've ever felt in my life. In the off season, like three days after the season was over, I was back in the gym. Um, I was already taking ground balls and hitting. So I was like doing full baseball activities, getting ready for spring training when I went for this physical. So I'm thinking, no, no doubt about it, I'm passing. And then when Scott called me, came, came into the room, he told me it was the ankle. And I said, what? Um, so I was confused, it was shocking. Um, the news were, were uh, very surprising to me and my family because you know there is zero. Uh, treatments log into my my uh, medical records in 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 MLB, so it's not like I'm spending every single day of my of my career in the training room before games. So I'm not getting any treatment. My ankle doesn't hurt. So it was confusing for sure. But they're saying that, it, that they're looking at the future. So you know, eight, ten years down the line, something might happen. Yada yada. And you know, you gotta understand that when you do a 13-year deal, 12-year deal, and stuff like that, then you know, it's, it's all about risk management. So. When you see something like that, I can see why the red flags. Um, and that's why we transitioned into a six-year deal with the options. And, you know, now if I want to keep playing, then, you know, I have the options there. I just got to keep playing good baseball. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just part of life. You can, you can bitch about it or you can keep moving on and keep playing baseball. And that's what I'm going to do. So are you going to be able to pitch back-to-back -back days? How, how does that conversation go with the Mets, too? Like, hey, this is what we want you to do while you're there. Balancing that with... with Team Puerto Rico, because a lot of guys have certain rules and restrictions. What's the deal there? Yeah, I got the same restriction. I won't pitch uh, back to bad days because um, it's early, uh, early March, mid March. So I, I can't pitch. I, if I pitch today, I have to be the next day off. So with one day in between, that's fine. That's that's really what I think. Didn't someone? Was there another player William that had your song? I think it was William Contreras. Yeah, Contreras, yeah. He yeah, so like, you drill him? Or Yo, you're like, dude, that's my songs, song, bro. Edwin, there's millions of songs. Like, tell him yeah. to pick something else. That's your damn song. You couldn't I got a uh, fun story. Like, last year, we, uh, I think the last game of the Dark da Series, in uh, late September, we was playing Atlanta. So I came to pitch because I got, like, three, four days off. Um, I came to face, I think, one or two batters. And they bring him as a pinch, pinch hit. So... <laughs> They play my song and I start laughing. I, I want to start laughing, but I myself was laughing inside. And I say, oh, I got I have to strike out this guy to, to let him know that's my son. <laughs> Your favorite pair of shoes you have right now, because you're a sneakerhead, I love shoes. Your favorite pair of shoes. And how many did you bring to spring training? How many pairs? Oof, I only brought two pairs in spring training. That's it? Disappointing, right? Yeah, because- You only brought two pairs know, of uh, tennis shoes to spring training. But remember, I, no I went through the ankle, I went through the ankle thingy, right? And I started yeah. doing my research. So the more I talked to doctors, they said that if I want to be able to play 10, 12, 15 years, whatever, whenever I want to retire, they said that the shoe has a lot to do with, you know, with, with the stuff that they're talking about on the ankle in the future. So he said, you know, try to wear the same shoe with the same insole. So you're not wearing shoes that are uncomfortable and might affect the area in the long term. Yeah, yeah, we weren't against it. Uh, at all it was just we like like AJ just said you know we don't want this to be a determining factor in a crucial game and I guess there's no way around that um, but yeah it, 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 like the disengagement rule with the pitchers like going take twice to me that's they want more action in the game that's kind of a lazy way to go about it uh same with getting rid of the shift. You know, obviously, the shift was a lot more uh, polarizing. There, were, there was more opinions from both sides on that, and it was more split from a player's perspective. Um, but to me, like the shift, I don't. You should be able to play your defense where you want to play them, and uh, that they shouldn't limit you to do that. Yeah, all Puerto Rican players are dying their hair blonde, so I'm playing the WBC. That's why I got my hair blonde. And last no. time y'all did that shit, y'all lost. Yeah, we lost, but <laughs> yeah, like, I changed the color. Man, you go red. We did something time. special for go Puerto Rico. Go, like, go red this red, time. Go red. blue. Yeah, switch the color. <laughs> Everybody going like this. 
How's the BP over there? I mean, Vlad Guerrero's got to be putting on a show. Bo Bichette, man. How is it watching the boys there and taking BP, especially down there in uh, Florida where you're at? Yeah, it's, I mean, you just you just kind of stop when when uh, Vladdy's hit it and watch and see what see what he he can do and what he does. He's crazy. It's just crazy to watch him. And then, um, I mean, just everybody really. I mean, from Chappie to Bo to, to Vladdy to um, we got guys that just put shows on out there. Yeah. So um, we're in a we're in a fantasy football league together, and uh, there was just. Let me just say this, you know, from I've never said what's up or hi to Jock on the baseball field. You know, we, we just we're not friends like that. We're not cool like that. So when we joined this football league together, um, there was a lot of shit talking. Oh, my, my fault. There was a no, lot. You can say, of, you can say whatever. No, you want. Tommy, no. that's wait, wait, Tommy. No, no. That's foul, why we bro. have this show. All the way there foul. Is no holding back. Whatever what you want. want. Yeah, there yeah, was a lot of shit digital. talking in the, in the group chat from Jock to me then to my you know my team at the time and I was just like man I never said what's up to this man I don't know what what makes what makes he him think it's cool you know to take shots at me and and my team then you know I forewarned him I was like hey you know Jock I'm not cool with you like this then you know he kept taking subtle shots so I was like you know next time I see you man I'm gonna pimp start the shit out of you <laughs> and you it did. just so happened to be a year later so <laughs> We've all known him for a very long time, and, and, and cheers, Bob. I've been told you about you have a water. This is our first week, so um, <laughs> it's been really fun. A lot of action going on. It's uh, it's great to have you. We had Bobby on earlier. How you doing today? Where are you at? I heard you're you're at the same camp, or you're right near each other. Yeah, I'm at the White Sox camp. Uh, they play the Reds today, so I'll see him in a couple hours. And you're making me jealous with the threat uh, here. It's still early out here, so a little too early. <laughs> Never too early, Bob. Never. I was at Angels camp this morning, like I said, and interviewing a number of Angels players. Guys at spring training, I know people are always optimistic, but these guys feel like this finally is a team that can win. Now, we've heard it all before from the Angels. I don't know that they can be trusted necessarily, but they are deeper than they've been in the past. Permanent Asian did a great job bringing in a number of different players just to kind of thicken the roster. I'm talking about Renfro and Tyler Anderson and all these guys. And Trout was very honest this morning. He said, we've got to win. And I asked him about signing the long-term deal here and people always asking him, hey, why'd you do that? Why don't you want out of there? And he said again, he wants to win here, but he was unequivocal about there being a certain urgency this year. And the players seem to really like Nevin as their manager, Phil Nevin. So I'm interested, really fascinated to see this team play. They're a different group, obviously, than they've been in the past. And their bullpen's a little bit better with Estevez and Mike Matt Moore. So fingers crossed we'll see a competitive Angels team this year. We got a big week coming up. Um, but thanks to everyone, the crew, like, one more time. Get, get claps for the crew. Like, this is not easy to yeah. do. This yeah. this shit looks good. Cheers, boys. Ticker, Girl, yeah, cheers. Job. The ticker cheers. looks tight. The wow. guests came in great. We were, second day we ever did this, we're remote. Sorry, I took it. At Mets camp, like, and, and props to the Mets for setting us up. Lindor, Diaz, Bam, Correa, Adam Jones was great. The whole deal. So, thank you, everyone. Cheers. Enjoy yourself. Get a nice steak dinner or, or have a drink or two on a Friday night. And thanks for uh, listening and being a part of foul territory in our first week in business. Hashtag FT Live if you want anything. Also, there are some ridiculous clips on some of our socials, so check them out. TikTok, at Foul Territory Show, uh, at Foul Territory TV on Twitter. I'm not going to be like that, you know, shameless plug person. This video will handle it for me. See you Monday.